I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country because you can't keep going on losing 200 billion, and yet we we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. And when I went in, I looked and I said, uh, "You're going to have to all pay, or we're not going to protect you any longer." And I remember the head of a country stood up and said, does that mean that if Russia attacks my country, you will not be there? That's right. That's what it means. I will not protect you. Trump's 1988 chilling statements, a sharp contrast to Biden's past. I've heard a lot of things about Biden that he did back in the day, but a lot of people don't see it, you know, because, you know, he is trying to pump out to their feelings. He's trying to tell them what they want to hear. That's what Biden is doing. He's just telling them what they want to hear. They don't like the truth. Trump tells the truth. They don't like it. They don't like truth in this world, bro. That's the world we're living. But Trump has always been real to me, man. He has always been real. He has his wrongs, you know, just like everybody else. He has his rights. Why are people trying to make it, make him look like this horrible, horrible guy, this uh, devil? I don't know. I don't get it, man. Shout out to Insightful Report. If you find value in this, make sure to drop a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe, man. Turn on your post notifications. Let's get into the video, man. In 1988, Oprah Winfrey posed a significant question to 42-year-old Donald Trump, whether he would ever consider running for president. Trump's response during that time is a notable piece of history. You took out a full-page ad in uh, major U.S. newspapers uh, last year criticizing U.S. foreign policy. What would you do differently, Donald? I'd make our allies, forgetting about the enemies, the enemies you can't talk to so easily. I'd make our allies pay their fair share. We're a debtor nation. Business Something's going to happen over the next number of years with this country because you can't keep going on losing $200 billion, and yet we, we let Japan come in and dump everything right into our markets and everything. It's not free trade. If you ever go to Japan right now and try to sell something, forget about it, Oprah. Just forget about it. It's almost impossible. They don't have laws against it. They just make it impossible. They come over here. They sell their cars, their VCRs. They knock the hell out of our companies. And, hey, I have tremendous respect for the Japanese people. I mean, you can respect somebody that's beating the hell out of you, but they are beating the hell out of this country. <laughs> Kuwait, they live like kings. The poorest person in Kuwait, they live like kings. And yet they're not paying. We make it possible for them to sell their oil. Why aren't they paying us 25% of what they're making? It's a joke. This, this sounds like Businessman. political presidential talk to me. And I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not. But I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I just probably wouldn't do it, Oprah. I probably wouldn't, but I do get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're, how we're really making other people live like kings, and we're not. What do, you, what do you think of this year's presidential race, the way it's shaping up? Well, it's going to be very interesting. I, I, think, uh, I think that probably George Bush has an advantage in terms of the election i think that probably people would say that he's got like that little edge in terms of the incumbency etc cetera, etc cetera. but i think jesse jackson's done himself very proud i think michael dukakis has done one hell of a job and george bush has done a hell of a job you know he, they all went in there sort of as semi underdogs including george bush and they've all come out uh, i think people that are around all three of those candidates can be very proud of the jobs they've done you've said though that if you did run for president you believe you'd win well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my life. And, <laughs> and if I did decide to do it, I think I'd be inclined. I, w I would say that I would have a hell of a chance of winning because I think people, I don't know how your audience feels, but I think people are tired of seeing the United States ripped off. And I can't promise you everything, but I can tell you one thing. This country would make one hell of a lot of money from those people that for 25 years have taken advantage. It wouldn't be the way it's been. Believe me. It's Come on, man. Trump is a G right there, man. Huh? always keeping the rear right there i think he he didn't want to say that he wanted to run that's a great that's a good move right there he he didn't want to say he wanted to run at that that you know what i'm saying that's a good move you don't tell your enemy what what you are what you are about to do but also too oprah oprah Winfrey, she was she was cool with trump now she hits the guy like crazy you know what i'm saying they were friends now she hates him trump said now they all hate him because he ran as a as a republican just trying to attack him attack him attack him ever since he started running for president i started hearing a lot of things about him 
before I didn't hear a lot of things about him. Oh, this, 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 oh, he's this, oh, taxes, this, taxes. The man has said he uses the same, he takes advantage of taxes just like other people. But he says it. Other people don't say that. Who is real? Literally, who 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 wants to be paying taxes, bro? Who wants to be paying taxes when 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 money is being printed like crazy every every day? Who wants to be paying taxes? You know what I'm saying? Who wants to be paying taxes? Like if you if you have if you have a means to 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 reduce your taxes and not even pay at all, bro? Who wouldn't do that, bro? Who wouldn't do that? You know, it's just common sense. And also too, when he became president, he lost his uh, his wealth dropped, his net worth dropped when he became president but the other people their net worth has increased who's the real one he just wanted to make the country better just wanted to make america better man but people call him all sorts of names and evident that donald trump has maintained his consistent beliefs since as far back as 1988 through 2016 and even today during those early years, the media generally loved Donald Trump. However, yeah. as soon as he aligned with the Republican Party in the 2010s, the media's perception of him drastically shifted. Exactly they began to I falsely said. accuse Trump of constantly changing his positions, flip-flopping, and being inconsistent. But in reality, Trump has remained steadfast in his views, unlike some other individuals. To you see, you see what I said? He didn't want to he he didn't want to say that he he wanted to run for president at that moment. You see? He didn't want to say it smart he didn't want to he, he was waiting because he knew he knew what would happen he saw it coming he knew what would happen that's why he didn't say it earlier that's why he waited trump is a smart guy man illustrate this point i want you to watch this uh, clip of joe biden showcasing his stance on immigration this serves as a stark contrast to trump's consistency over the years i don't well, let me talk to something unsavory now the issue of immigration yeah. is there a democratic party position which accommodates the need to stop illegal entry punish people who hire people with cheap wages illegally and also gives hope to people who live here illegally and people who want to come here right now is there a possible combination that hits all those points? I think there is. And I think that the, that the McCain-Kennedy bill, Kennedy-McCain, the Specter bill that came right. out does it. If you take a look, Chris, at what Frist is talking about, only enforcement. The enforcement provisions that sit inside the Specter bill, the McCain or the Kennedy McCain bill, there ain't a dime's worth of difference to them. They're the same amount of money, 12,000 new border agents. Do they work? I think they will work better if they actually, in fact, do it. Can you scare okay. an employer in this country, whether he's an agricultural worker or a housewife, into not hiring an illegal because the punishment's so high that if you get caught, yes. it's a huge embarrassment to your family and you may just hit a, get hit with a fine that'll kill you. Yeah, absolutely, you, you can. can do and that's we should do. Well, I think we should do that. Because other, you can't catch everybody. You can't. No, 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 you, you, you can't. And the last part of this is that the Democratic position also recognized you got 11 million alien, uh, illegal aliens here. They have to have a way to earn their way into the deal. This is an amnesty. They're required to take 11 years' worth. They pay a fine. They got to learn to speak English. They got to pass um, like tests. Yeah. I like the English well, part. Yeah. Well, by the I way, think we, if we want the problems of Canada right now, to keep encouraging people to keep their foreign language. English is going to unite this country potentially. It always has in the past. I can't think of a country that has two languages as their accepted languages that is doing all that well, including right. Switzerland and or right. uh, Canada. It, it, it divides us. Yeah. And you can't talk to each other. Anyway, thank you, Senator Joe Biden. Thank you. you see what I'm saying? This is somebody, this is somebody who, uh, you know, who's trying to pamper it to, to people, you know? This is, this, is not, this is not the same Joe Biden that we know right now. It's not him, bro. It's literally not him. You know, I've seen way crazy clips of, of him saying way crazier things you know what i'm saying but now he's trying to pump other people and you know that makes you really think like well what's up well, you know what i'm saying like what all this for? why wasn't he like this people say oh the change blah blah i think he's still the same but he's just he's just playing you know what i'm saying he's just playing i don't think he's real he's not being real bro I don't think it's, he's, he's been real. On immigration, I'm, a, I'm an immigrant myself, you know what I'm saying? But if I was a president of any country, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, okay, illegals should not come in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that because there's some people that could, you know, could, that could, um, you know, uh, afford it. And there's people that that, that couldn't, you know what I'm saying, to, to come uh, the regular way, you know what I'm saying? But firstly, the country, my, my country will be first, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that the people in the country are, are well taken care of, you know, that's what I would do. Then let's say for, let's say, after like five years or like every year, let's say, yeah, every year. Okay, see that. Okay, how is the country doing? Okay, we'll let this number of people come in illegally. Okay, when they come in, we check them like this. Boom, boom, boom. 
good yeah good okay now we'll let them stay for this number of years you know what i'm saying yeah everything goes well with them you know yeah i wouldn't uh you know just because immigrants build america bro you know what i'm saying i'll never be president of america <laughs> i will never be don't 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 attack me i will never be i will never ever 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 be You've done it. <laughs> Joe Biden may have expressed a particular stance on immigration in the past. It appears that he has since become inconsistent and has right. flip-flopped on this issue. Facts. His current views on immigration seem to contradict his previous statements, causing confusion and uncertainty about his position. This inconsistency raises concerns about his reliability and trustworthiness. You use the word illegal when talking about the man who allegedly killed um, uh, Lake and Riley. An undocumented person. And I shouldn't have used illegal. I should have, it's undocumented. And look, when I spoke about the difference between Trump and me, one of the things I talked about on the border was that his the way he talks about vermin, the way he talks about these people polluting the blood. I talked about what I'm not going to do, what I won't do. I'm not going to treat any 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 of these people with disrespect. Look, they built the country. The reason our economy is growing, we have to control the border and, and more orderly flow. But I, I don't share his view at all. So you, you regret using that word. Yeah. Now comparing Donald Trump's views from the past to his current stance is essential for understanding his consistency. In Europe now, they're taking advantage of us at a level that nobody's ever seen. As an example, in Ukraine, so we're in for 150 billion. Now you know that it's much more important for Europe than us, but we want to see people live, etc. But we're in for 150 billion and Europe's in for 17 billion. If you add Europe yes, up, if you add all the various countries, they're approximately the same size economy. So I say, why aren't they in for the same number or more? I mean, in theory and more. So they should equalize. They should come up and they should equalize. They've got plenty, but I don't think anybody from the Biden administration's ever is. If you ask them, if I said to them, listen, we're in for 100 billion more than you, you have to put up the next hundred billion. We have to equalize. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. They'll put up the money, but nobody ever asks them. Same thing with NATO. Right. We were way over our heads in NATO. Many of the countries weren't paying. They were delinquent. Only eight of the 28 countries were current. We were way current. We were paying three, four times what we were supposed to. We were carrying it. And when I went in, I looked and I said, uh, you're going to have to all pay or we're not going to protect you any longer. And I uh, remember the head of a country stood up and said, does that mean that if Russia attacks my country, you will not be there? That's right. That's what it means. I will not protect you. And the money came. The money came pouring in. In general, Donald Trump has been known for his outspoken nature and firm stances on various issues, including immigration, trade, and national security. Throughout his political career, he has emphasized themes such as America first, border security, economic nationalism, and skepticism towards international agreements and organizations. It's indeed noteworthy that Donald Trump has maintained consistency in his messaging over several decades, going as far back as the 1980s. Despite the accusations of being a phony or changing his positions, a thorough examination of his past interviews reveals a remarkable level of consistency in his beliefs and viewpoints. Regardless of one's stance on Trump's consistency, it's clear that his unwavering messaging has left a significant impact on his supporters and critics alike. I'd love to know your thoughts on this, so be sure to leave them in the comments below. Trump's a G, man. It's always been a G to me, man. So it's, it's always been a G. He's always kept it real, man. Always kept it real. You see the way he spoke? Yes. Yes, I said what I said. <laughs> uh, I said what I said. Yeah, nah, they have to put in more. Nah, they have to put in equal. Oh, no, nah, we are not protecting you. Yes, that's a G right there, man. It's a G right there. Not people who are trying to pamper to other people, man. Those people are fake, bro. Are literally fake, man. <laughs>